Hello, art friends. I have a product review for you of the Kiritaki Zig Clean Color Brush Markers. I'm not sponsored nor being paid for this video. It is my experience with these markers. I picked them up on Amazon. They were $35 for a set of 24, roughly $1.45 each before tax and shipping. So they're not a bad price. Um, I've set up a sheet of 120 pound Canson watercolor paper to do swatching and listed out all the colors and the names already. Hopefully you can see them and the image isn't too blurry. And one of the main reasons I got these were for the tip. It's a nylon brush tip and my camera won't focus. <laughs> Sorry about that. Uh, the tip is pretty cool. It has a nice thin wispy uh, tip on it so you can get fine lines. Of course, the harder you press, the wider the line. I did notice if you press too hard and go too fast, it leaves gaps, so you have to go back over it, which you could see a little bit of, even though I sped this up a little. Um, trying to give you guys a close-up view of the color saturation, which looks like a standard, you know, water-based marker, and these are dye-based colors. And in all this time that I'm showing you guys the close-up, it's giving it more dry time, uh, which I did notice could be a good or a bad thing. The longer you let it dry, the less color is going to spread. So if you want good, good saturation and you want the original place where you put the color to disappear, you need to do it quickly. Um, even with these getting watered out into the watercolor, they're keeping some pretty good pigment. The only colors that I noticed uh, didn't do so well were the flesh, uh, the pale green, and the light gray. Um, they just didn't have a huge effect. They have less dye than the rest, so it's understandable. But with other methods of using it in the watercolor aspect, it'll come out better, but doing the dry method, dry to wet, you're not going to get a huge impact with the light green, the flesh, or the light gray. So, got these all swatched out, and I did another swatch on 90 pound paper, uh, 90 pound reeves, and you can see it's on the top, and it didn't give a watercolor effect. It just, up close, it kind of looks like the whole thing was done with two different colored markers, <laughs> a lighter and a darker shade. And the 120 pound paper gave a fantastic watercolor effect. You could see the movement of the color and, you know, just dried like watercolor would dry. It was fantastic. So if you're looking for a marker that you can use water with and get more of a full marker look with less work, use it on 90 pound paper or less. And if you want something that's more specific to watercolor look, use 120 pound paper. All right, so off camera, I went ahead and sketched an image and did a couple thumbnails just to see what colors would work well together. Um, after swatching, I noticed the brown is more of a rust orange. So I had to use that one for the fox. I think it's fantastic. A little bummed that the brown isn't brown. <laughs> But the dark brown, when it gets wet, is more of a brown, so that's okay. It's a good trade-off. Um, so I swatched out and picked my colors and tried a couple different uh, methods. I wet the paper first. I used the paper dry. I did a tip exchange with my Derwent water brush and uh, figured out what I was going to use for this. So I'm also going to use my palette, and if you can see, I've already started it up. I just took the zig marker and basically drew inside of the cup on the palette and added water to it to do a light wash. You could also use this method for uh, mixing colors. If you don't get a set as large as the 24 or the, I think they have a 36 and a 96. Um, I'd have to check on those. Uh, 
you know, you could get away with just the smallest set that they have available and still getting all these fantastic colors because you could just mix them together. You could do tip to tip or, you know, color a palette just like that and pick it up with the other marker. You don't necessarily have to have one of those water brushes that I have. So I want to go over some of the, the pros and the cons that I've experienced while I was swatching and doing this image and a few other images that I did. Um, did some other illustrations with these. Uh, they're very convenient for travel and for lazy people who just don't want to set up a palette <laughs> or have all those extra, you know, bits and pieces, having brushes and a, a cup of water or whatever else you deem necessary. Um, you could use this with a cap full of water if you want to water it down. You know, you could always use them without it. Um, they're very flexible in the way that you can use them because you can use them wet. You can use them dry. You can blend colors tip to tip, which is another one of my pros is the blendability. You can use these with a palette, without a palette, which I really like. Um, you get all the, the functionality of regular watercolors. And the pigment's really nice. I'm not sure how light fast it is. It doesn't say on the website. I'd have to email them to get an exact uh, color fastness for these, which they may not have because it's dye based. Um, I won't say that they're the best bang for your buck. They're not terrible. Uh, again, I paid $35 for a set of 24. So $1.45 per pen isn't terrible, but you could get away with getting a really nice set of tube or pan watercolors for that price. You just wouldn't have, you know, the convenience or the flexibility. Um, and they are good without water. If you're just into coloring books, um, coloring book pages, anything like that, and you just want to use them as standard markers, they're really good for that too. You know, they're just a little expensive for that purpose if you're not using the duality of watercolor and marker. Um, my cons are a very short list. They're not refillable. There's no option to refill these. And at the price point that they are, I thought that was a little crazy that they didn't have any kind of refill options. I'm sure you probably could hack these little pens and you know, get some kind of dye-based liquid to put in there, or even um, use a tube of watercolors and just water them down and put them in there. I'm sure there's some functionality there or some hack that you can figure out. Uh, they do dry out right out of the box. The uh, blue-gray and one of the greens were terribly dried out. I couldn't even get them to budge, so I had to soak them in a little bit of water and... Uh, loosen them up a little bit. So there is that. And I'm guessing over time, if you're not using them often, they could dry up. Um, they're not very big markers to begin with. So there's not a whole lot of, of use out of these markers. And I've had them for a little while and done maybe four or five uh, illustrations with them. And they're all medium-sized illustrations like this one. So they haven't completely run out yet, but I'm sure that they will give out soon. <laughs> I don't know that I would buy another set of these. I'd probably invest in just another set of uh, tube or pan watercolors and utilize my Derwent brushes a little bit more by putting the watercolor or inks in them instead, which is great. Um, the saturation with only one pass is spotty, so you would have to go over several times even if you're just using it as standard marker, which I thought was kind of a bummer. Uh, overall, I think there's more pros than there is cons for these, but, you know, that's just my opinion on it. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me do a follow-up video with tips and tricks on how to use these, or if you've purchased them and have tips and tricks you want to share with everyone else, that's cool too. Um, did you like them? Did you not like them? Is this something you're looking to get? I'd love to know all those things. So just let me know in the comments below. And thank you guys for watching.